Check that guy out. Look at those grooves. Man, I don't I don't think I've ever seen a a pit two stroke piston as bad as that. Look at that. Look at right up at the top. Piston right there. The thing is toast. It almost looks like sand. It had some water in it. Hey guys, welcome back. So this is going to be pretty much a part three on these two jet skis here, Yamaha and this Sea-Doo GTX. Um, where we left off in the previous video, we had taken this Sea-Doo engine apart, and this is where we left off. We basically took the case off here. We got a bunch of parts here. And we even got more coming in. Got some new cylinders and pistons for the Yamaha. Uh, sleeves and pistons for the Sea-Doo. All new seals, grips, wear rings, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I was thinking we should probably start back uh, where we left off on the Sea-Doo engine. But I think the Yamaha is going to be a little bit easier to finish quicker. So... I think we're gonna go ahead and just jump back to the Yamaha and see if we can get it finished up. And as I promised in the previous video, we are gonna do a giveaway in this video. Um, let me show you what we got here. So in this giveaway, we're gonna get, be giving away a set of Oxbeam pod lights here. These are some pretty nice lights. They're very bright. And we'll be giving these away. So we'll have more details on these uh, later on in the video. So stay tuned for that. And um, But yeah, let's go ahead and start uh, digging into the Yamaha and getting these cylinders and pistons on. That and this cylinder are still little bit of shavings down in it so we'll get that all cleaned out so I'm getting ready to install the power valves here and um, I was gonna buy some wave eater clips for it which is basically a clip that goes over these pins to keep it from sliding out and then having the power valve drop in but instead, I think I'm going to cut these back just a hair because they're, they protrude past that a little bit. And I'm going to put a little bit of weld right there on each side so that will enclose the pin in there. Not weld it together, but enclose it so that pin can't slide out. And uh, we'll see if that works or not. <laughs> Alright, so uh, here's the clips here for the power valves, and as you can see, now these pins can't slide through the ends. You always want your opening of a stir clip pointing up. Alright, get that stir clip in. So 
so I got some of this uh, seal and lock compound for the threads. I actually believe this is what the factory puts on it to begin with. Got all the power valves installed, along with the cables, so it should be working. Let's see if they move freely. Looks like they are, so I think we're good. Alright guys, we are all put back together. I got the compression tester hooked up and we're just going to do a test. Remember in the first test we are at like, I think it was 60 psi. Go ahead and check it. So we're at about 125. And once the rings get seated, um, those numbers should go up. Alright guys, we got, for the most part, everything put back together. Still a bunch of little odds and ends to do. But I want to go ahead and crank it up and see if this thing runs or does anything. So, we've got some uh, jumper cables hooked to the full wheeler here. Let's see what happens. Alright guys, here goes nothing. guys here we go we're in the water let's see what it does <laughs> they cranked right up seems to be running fine see a bunch of water coming out I'm gonna break it in a little bit and then we'll come back and get a single little test drive
good. Just idling along right now. Hi right, guys, now that we got the Yamaha running good and got good compression on it, we're gonna start back working on this sea -Doo. So we're gonna go where we left off and uh, finish taking this engine apart. All these bearings seem really smooth and tight. I know you can do a test with the air compressor and spin them up, but I really believe these are good. Well, the bearing looks good on this. This is very tight, roll smoothly. Time for a helical. Looks pretty good. Alright guys, gonna cook me up a cylinder and freeze me a sleeve. Let's let this heat up and we'll slide the sleeve in. Hopefully this thing drops right in. Alrighty, we got all the ports lined up perfectly, as good as it's going to get. So now we'll have to send this off and get this uh, board out at my local machine shop and we can start the assembly. Alright, while we're waiting on the cylinders to get bored out, I'm cleaning this hole out and uh, I know some of these lines are just completely like blocked off. So I'm going to take these lines off and 
get them cleaned out and also we're going to take the pump off and replace the wear ring and I might replace this carbon ring and even the prop we'll see what condition it is in also we're going to put some new grips on here a new switch and a new gauge cluster up there so let's get to it super clean here Some new grips. I think we're gonna need a new one of those. It's like worn uneven. the pieces around it all this plastic has just completely disintegrated <sighs> surprisingly it doesn't look too bad I broke it loose with a big cheater bar Original CD prop. So y'all check out the difference in these wear rings. Look at all that space that's in there. And we got our new wear ring right here. And it's still not perfect, but it's a whole lot better. I mean there's still some movement in it. I really need a new prop, but I man, I, I'm just too cheap. Say that's a pretty good bit better still not 100 percent perfect you know it needs a new prop but i cleaned this one up a little bit so it's better than it was all right got the new carbon ring in and as you can see this bellow is a little bit bigger this is a whole lot thicker than this and man that is some nice machining and as you can see 
this is considerably bigger and that is also some nice machining so let's get this installed Um, I'm going to fix this gauge here. So the LCD doesn't work and it needs a new polarizing film here. And I have a new polarizing film in this package. So let's go ahead and take this gauge out and see if we can fix it. Right, so now we got to scrape this old polarizing film off the LCD screen and apply our new one. Now we're going to just take our razor blade and get up under there. You can see it's already starting to kind of come off at the corners. And we're just going to work our way through this old polarizing film. take some denatured alcohol and just wipe the screen get all the rest of the residue off all right we are all cleaned off but this LCD looks like it's pretty much screwed I'm gonna try it anyway So before I put this back together, I'm just going to spray some of this conformal coating on the board here and that will uh, protect it and keep it waterproof if this board still works. got all the paint off the parts or most of it we're gonna go ahead and finish it off by uh, putting them in the sand blaster and get them cleaned up and then we'll start assembling it get it painted all right got our parts sandblasted and cleaned up uh, got some primer on this one just to see how it's gonna look and I think we're ready to start putting stuff back together all right let's start assembling this engine Go ahead and install this counterbalancer. We have a mark right there. And a mark right here. So we're going to press our uh, bearing off of our rave shaft. So we're going to replace the seal. Now we can replace that seal. Have the bearing pressed on, let's go ahead and start putting it together. Alright, we're ready 
to meet our other half on it. So I'm going to take some 515 and just go around the perimeter here. So these uh, crank bolts get torqued to 30 foot-pounds and the smaller bolts get torqued to 17. So we're still waiting on my cylinder to come back from the machine shop. So I'm going to go ahead and do as much as I can until then. Looks like we got a little visitor. Hey, buddy. So before we put these cylinders on, we're going to fill this little oil drain back hole with one ounce of two stroke oil and that will lubricate the counterbalance shaft. Make sure that your circlip opening is pointing up and not in that groove all right so let's get this piece of trim put back on So this cover is cracked pretty bad and uh, somebody put all this duct tape around it so let me see if I can clean this up and maybe refiberglass it. Alright so I got some acetone here and this stuff is very very hard to get off. I've tried all kinds of stuff already and it seems like acetone works the best.
So after over two months, I finally got my other cylinder back from the machine shop. And it looks beautiful. So now we can finish putting the engine back together. So I went ahead and installed this uh, exhaust manifold without the gasket, tighten the bolts down uh, to where they're snug. That way it aligned the cylinders. Now I can go ahead and torque these down. I believe it's 30 foot pounds. I'm just gonna kind of half torque them for now. All right, we'll go around and finish torquing those. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set the rotary valve timing. I'm gonna make sure the number one cylinder, which is uh, close to the magneto side, is that top dead center. Then we're going to take our degree wheel here. See where it says 360. We're gonna align that 360 mark on the bottom of our intake port. Then we're gonna come up here where it says 147. And I actually already have a little hash mark right there probably can't see it but it's right here now we're going to take our rotary valve here and we are going to set it right if it doesn't line right up flip it over and it should line right up with it which is right there all right now that's set So now that we got the engine assembled, I'm going to go ahead and do a leak down test with my Ansel leak detector. It's a smoke leak detector and has a gauge so you can uh, test the pressure. So right now I have it hooked up to my rotary valve intake tube here and I have the back one blocked off or the hose just uh, zip tied together. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this thing on. I'm going to turn it to 5 psi and then I'm going to turn it off and hold it there and we're gonna uh, see if we see how long we can hold the pressure without any leaks and see if any smoke leaks out so we're gonna leave it there so it's holding it's about yeah right at five maybe a hair over and I don't see any leaking coming out so we're gonna hold that there and uh, we'll test it for a few minutes and see how long it holds, see if the pressure goes down. Right now it's it's holding right at five, so that's good. There might be a small air leak right here in the tube. All right, so we're back. We might have dropped maybe a half a PSI, but I think that's on these, so it's been a few minutes. Let's go ahead and pull this off. I haven't seen any smoke come out, so. See, yeah, it still was holding a lot of pressure. We can see the smoke coming out. So I think our rotary valve seals are good, or our inner crank seals, I'm sorry. And uh, now we're gonna go ahead and touch the outer crank seals. Okay, so now we have this adapter that comes with it and we can pump it up and actually fill in there areas like this. 
and this will let smoke also come in while blocking it off. So now we can go ahead and test that. So we're holding pressure good. It's a pretty, pretty neat little tool to have. So now when I take the covers off, you can see where obvious leaks are right here. So uh, I think it's pretty cool. All right, that turned out pretty good. Let's go ahead and mix up some color. Baby. <laughs> yep. You're a good girl, huh? You're a good girl. <laughs> All right, so I was able to find a uh, used oil tank, but it did have a small crack right here. So I just went ahead and sealed around the whole thing. Hopefully it doesn't leak. Let's go ahead and uh, put this thing in. Alright guys, we are pretty much all the way put back together for the most part. Still got to put the air box and a couple odds and ends back on. But I want to go ahead and do a compression test, so I got the gauge hooked up here. Let's go ahead and see what we got. This is, uh, I guess, cylinder number one here. in cylinder number two and uh so we got here we're 
like 155, maybe 160. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty dang good. All right, let's finish getting this thing put back together and uh, see if she cranks up. All right guys, we are all finished, put back together. There are a few little things I gotta hook back up, but I wanna see if this thing runs first. So, let's give it its uh, first shot. I've been cranking this thing over a lot, so I did get some fuel to prime in here. Let's see if it pops off. Let's see what happens. All right, here goes nothing. seems a little high all right guys so um i ended up figuring out i did have a small air leak on the carburetor base gasket so i went ahead and replaced that i went ahead and painted the carburetors and i replaced the fuel lines with some of this really nice uh fuel line i think it's um a tigon line it's just not your typical yellow green whatever color but let's go ahead and crank this thing up see what it does I haven't cranked it yet today and it's pretty cold out today. We just had a really cold spell come through. So before we uh, take the jet skis for a ride, when I come back to this Oxbeam pod light giveaway, I showed these at the beginning of the video, two very nice pod light, LED pod lights. So for the giveaway, all you have to do is guess how many brass pieces or brass fittings, whatever, are in this container. Whoever guesses the number first, will win and if nobody guesses that number within say two weeks or the next video i post will be the winner and i will post that in the comments so uh all you have to do is just guess the number in here now uh the rules for the giveaway are you have to be in the united states and you have to be subscribed and just post a comment and uh and then I will announce the winner and we will ship off the pod lights to you.
up.
Hey, buddy. <laughs> All right, y'all. This is the end of this video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and uh, checking these jet skis out. So uh, they both ran pretty well uh, all day, even in this cold weather. But um, yeah, pretty happy with them. I'm going to go ahead and winterize them, and they'll be put up for the winter, and we'll see them again next summer. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me, and I will see y'all on the next video. Take care.